So what we see happening is a continued falls in a volatile manner. Hello everyone, today our guest is Simon Hunt. Simon Hunt and his Simon Hunt Strategic Services is a leading provider of analysis of the economy and copper production. In this video, Simon Hunt analyzes the global economy and geopolitical situation as well as the Fed's war on inflation and threats of recession in detail. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell is waging a relentless battle against inflation that threatens to leave a path of destruction on the global economy in its wake. The Fed, carrying out its steepest interest rate hikes in three decades, has fueled market turmoil by boosting the value of the dollar and feeding higher borrowing costs from the UK to Japan to Latin America. But Powell's no. One enemy is inflation at home, and he has signaled that the Fed will do what's best for the US, no matter what. Powell's actions have caused a flood of money to flee the shores of other countries for safer American investments that offer a much more attractive payoff because the US now has its highest interest rates since 2008. A stronger dollar means the cost for Europeans of heating their homes and powering their cities, already driven sky high by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, is getting even greater. And smaller developing countries could begin to drown in ever more burdensome debt payments. We are in World War III. And when you strip out the niceties and see what Washington, London, and Brussels are throwing into Ukraine, not just funds and military equipment, much of which actually never gets there. But the fact from reports that I have that Ukraine's war against Russia is being conducted by American and UK officers somewhere around Kiev. So this is going to have enormous implications for monetary and fiscal policies. First, central banks will be, will have to look at the consequences of war in policy making. Thus, I think it's very likely that with the Fed tightening, less credit going into the system, and with rates rising, that there will be an accident in financial markets. And that will be the excuse for the Fed to stop tightening and to go back by the end of this year, back to QE. So what we see happening is a continued falls in a volatile manner of equity markets into say the spring of next year. The dollar falls off its peak and will probably fall by something like 13% into the spring. Uh, commodity markets will continue to uh, fall, um, but inflation, though having a dip, will still remain high and we will see a resurgence of inflation accompanied by the dollar falling very sharply uh, into later into 23 and 24. And that's uh, late 24, early 25 is when we will get the blow off with long term 10 year US treasuries by mid 24, probably rising to 11% plus. Uh, so we will have internal uh, problems in the market. At the same time, the war weather in Europe 
Asia, all the Middle East intensifying. So that will lead us into, frankly, a depression, which will be similar to what was experienced in 2932. How it ends, who knows? But what we piece together, trying to put our dots together, is that within three years, and possibly sooner rather than later, that the new world will start operating their new currency, which is linked to 20 odd commodities, but those commodities are not priced in dollars. They are valued in grams of gold. This, right. change, this changes the global balances enormously. I think it is very likely from my chats in this part of the world that it won't be long before oil is sold, not in dollars, but in some other currency. One of the meteorologists that I follow, who's been very accurate, showing that in 2425, we get the 90 year Gleisberg cycle coming in. And the last time we saw that in the 1930s was when we had the Dust Bowl. Okay. This hits the US Midwest, which is a huge producer of agricultural products. I think there's an important part of this equation is how much does Russia and how much does China actually hold in gold? Mm -hmm. Because the published figures are just a small part of the total. For Russia, their actual gold holdings is around 12,000 tons of which the central bank holds, I've forgotten the figure, 1,200 or 1,500. Okay, and just, just, just held, for comparison, the US has 8,000 tons? Supposedly. Okay, supposedly, but that's what they're reporting in Fort yeah, Knox. Yeah, absolutely, too. yeah. Okay, so, so you're saying that, uh, they, that you calculate that Russia, act, Russia actually has more than America right now. I'm curious, yeah. how do you get to that number? Um, China owns about 52,000 tons, of which about 17, 18,000 is held by the public, having bought the gold off the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The rest is held by different um, um, uh, Chinese ministries, which includes the PLA and to uh, uh, tell a little story about it. Uh, a very good uh, a friend of mine, Japanese friend of mine, uh, had a lot of uh, um, companies in China and said to me, uh, I have to know a lot of different people, one of which was a very senior general. I was invited down to headquarters um, for drinks four o'clock one afternoon. And as he said to me, at six o'clock, I got a tap on the shoulder. Let's go for a walk. So he walked across the compound into, and there was a huge warehouse. And as he said, the doors opened, my jaws dropped because stacked from floor to ceiling were bars of gold. So just a little anecdotal story to illustrate that gold is actually held not only by the central bank. Between now and early next year, 
cash should be king. But there will be a moment sometime in the first quarter of next year when central banks have shifted from QT to QE. And we start seeing a resurgence of inflation. You're going to have the last hurrah in equity and commodity markets. Uh, I've forgotten the figure that my technical associate has for the S&P, but it's super high. So I think that, and the commodities, you'll have oil at least at 250. You'll have okay. copper peaking yeah, sometime in mid 2024 at around $14,000 having fallen to 6,002 in the first quarter of next year. So the bottom line really is that uh, people will have 18 months to two years to make a lot of money um, and then to keep it in cash. Don't think that Christmases are here forever sometime around mid 2024 to 2025, um, asset prices will begin falling sharply. As we said earlier in the video, the Fed's moves have already led the Bank of Japan to move on currency markets. BOJ Governor Haruhiko Kuroda and his fellow central bankers last week left interest rates in sub-zero territory and said they have no plans to raise them anytime soon. But Japanese authorities also took unexpected action, after the Fed raised rates by another three-quarters of a percentage point to prop up the value of the yen. In action, the U.S. Treasury Department made clear it is watching closely but stopped short of condemning. The whole world is breaking apart. For how long will we see a hawkish Fed and super strong dollar? If you enjoy this highlight videos, Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.